Hey friends, it's Dr. AJ. I missed you guys. I just wanted to go live. I've been on Clubhouse every night this week and I call myself taking a break from talking. But when you are a professional speaker, child, <laughs> you start missing your peeps. So I missed y'all. So I wanted to jump back on here. I'm just finishing up somewhat of a denter. And I wanted to talk. <laughs> so when you come in the room, say hello, 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 hello. I'm just hanging out. <clears throat> no special topic. Just wanted to come on and say hello to my babes. My phone is charging. I have a very low battery life. Say hey, let me know you're here. Where are you listening in from? I didn't put a title, so I know you must really wanted to come say hey <laughs> to be on here right now. <laughs> How are you? How is your day? I just read that we are getting black ice here in the city of Atlanta. Thank God I went grocery shopping a couple days ago. And then I go to make myself a really good salad. And I realized I left a whole bag of groceries in the car. But thank God it's cold outside. So they were fine. I'm vegetarian, which I guess that could be topic of our conversation tonight. One of our coaches, Marquita, asked me to share my vegan vegetarian journey. So I was glad that my groceries are all veggie. (laughs) <laughs> and they stayed chilled for the last two nights <laughs> sitting in the car. And I didn't even miss them until I looked in the fridge. And I'm like, mm, this is kind of low for me just going to spend almost $200 on food. Yeah, it's a whole missing bag in the car that I did not see because I unloaded my car at night. So, yes, I am vegan vegetarian. Um, Several years ago, back in 2015... I remember being at an um, event with the same lady who told me um, about the life coach certification training that I ended up going through after her. And so she um, was, I had got, I had landed her a speaking opportunity here in Atlanta. It was a organization I had spoken for and um, they were looking for speakers. I recommended her. And so I showed up to support her the day of her event and I was sitting in the back minding my business feeling good looking cute listening giving her kind of like producer's credit in the back like say this do this go here ask this question I was leading the discussion for her when it was time for her Q&A and so um everything went well we ended up leaving, everybody packed up, ready to go. And so she and I decided, you know, that because everything went well and to thank me for telling her about the speaking opportunity, we would go to lunch down at um, down the street from the event venue at a restaurant called Papa Do's. Now, I don't know if Papa Do's exists outside of Atlanta. They may, but they are like a, I don't even know, it's like New Orleans style food. Say, hey, when you come in the room, I can't see your name or the count, but I see emojis. Thank you, girl. So we went to Papa Do's, which serves like seafood. Like it's very bougie, very expensive. It can be when you're feeding multiple people. And it's kind of like an upscale eatery. And um, the funny part, I'm going to pause there, is that I didn't know that I knew one of the, the head chefs at the restaurant. I had been there before years ago. And we had a problem with the service and the chef came to our table and I was like, what you doing here? You know, so it was one of those. And he ended up giving us a really good deal. Um, and so everybody looked at me like, oh, Dr. AJ knows everybody in Atlanta. But this was not that time. But back to the story at hand. So she and I have gone to Papa Do's that night. And I think I asked for the chef that night um, and he wasn't working. And so we just sat and enjoyed our meal. I had a um, I had salmon. I had grilled asparagus, some really good buttery, garlicky mashed potatoes. Um, I had, hey, Cousin Judy. I had um, ice cream, fudge ice cream to go because I was full, but I want she was treating. So I was like, I'm getting everything, full of course. I had lemonade to drink. And I think we had um, like some type of um, like a cocktail. And so we were good. We sat, we talked. Our bill came to a little bit over 100 bucks. And she was like, thank God, you know, (laughs) I got it. (laughs) So we laughed because it took us both a minute in our businesses to grow to the point where, you know, we were fully comfortable spending money. And so to know that we were celebrating and able to spend the money, well, she was spending the money. I was, 
you know, allowing her to spend her money as a thank you to me. So um, we get to the car after dinner and we say our goodbyes. We hug. She goes her way. She lives on one side of Atlanta. I live in the countryside of Atlanta. So I had a little drive um, back home and I was taking my time. But then all of a sudden I started feeling weird. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh, what's happening? I had just bought the car that I was, that I currently drive, but it was, um, I bought it um off of a car dealership but it was a part of an estate sale little did i know the car i bought was a classic and people stop me all the time about my car now so anyway um i had not replaced the windshields and it had started to rain so i had to pull over into a gas station and let the rain go down because the windshields on it you know i didn't know the wipers were terrible because the car had sat for so long um because the previous owner had passed away So it finally stopped raining. I head home. I make it there, but I'm still feeling kind of weird. And I was like, what is happening? Am I just excited? Am I just like, I don't know. So I'm trying to self-diagnose. Do I just need to, you know, go use the bathroom? (laughs) Do I need to take something? And uh, yeah, it just, it wasn't, literally wasn't sitting right with me. So I go to the restroom and I vomit. All of that $100 meal came up into the toilet. Now, this is graphic, so brace yourself, okay? That's about as graphic as it gets. But anyway, I remember just letting my stomach, my body empty itself. <laughs> and I went to sleep, or I tried to. Um, And the next morning, <clears throat> she and I talked. And I was like, girl, <laughs> let me tell you about last night. Because this food did not sit well with me. I might have got food poisoning from like the fish or something just was not right. And so she was like, me too. She said, it came back up for me as well. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, we got bad food from this bougie restaurant. She said, but mine went away. Why is yours still, why do you still feel weird? And I was like, I don't know. So we talked again later that day and I'm like, girl, I am so still throwing up she's like okay mine has passed something ain't right with you you may need to go get checked out at the hospital so I waited as we do (laughs) and I gave it time um and eventually I ended up in the emergency room and it took several visits but on the first visit they told me um Miss Austin you have gallstones I was like what's that (laughs) Because I didn't know what gallstones were. I knew what kidney stones were because I had an auntie who had kidney stone surgery years ago. And she kept the kidney stones, the literal stones they removed from her stomach or kidney, whatever. She kept them in a jar in my grandmother's window. And I always thought that was so weird. We knew they looked like little rocks, a.k.a. stones. And it was just really, I don't know why she did this to this day. I might need to ask her. But anyway, I was like, maybe it's like that. Because when they said gallstones, I was like, okay, so there's stones somewhere in my stomach. So the doctor educated me on what it was. They sent me home with a prescription. I looked it up and I started to slowly understand, but I still didn't quite understand what it was. And so over time and a series of emergency room visits, I finally got a doctor who took me serious and I really believed he was a godsend. And he's like, okay, before this gets any worse, We're going to, well, let me pause there, tell you what he said. So in between visits of me going every time I threw up, it was, it wasn't painful. It was just severely uncomfortable. And I don't know, it was just unexplainable. I couldn't keep food down. I couldn't eat certain foods. They gave me a list of foods that didn't have as much grease because come to find out having gallstones um, affected the way that my body was processing the the oils and the grease from different foods. So I um, decided I had been vegetarian years before as a result of a Daniel fast that we did with my church. And if you guys know what a Daniel fast is, you're usually off of meat and sweets and bread. And I did that fast. We only did it for like 45 days in my church, but I kept going with it years prior did it for nine months. And then I got bored because you couldn't pull up to a McDonald's and order like a veggie sandwich you know (laughs) it's like what am I gonna eat and I don't really cook but I got tired of cabbage and squash and zucchini and mushrooms (laughs) and onions and green bell pepper that's all I would buy at the grocery store now the upside was my grocery bill was only 20 bucks every time I went 
The downside is, yeah, you get tired of spending the same 20 bucks on the same types of food every time you go grocery shopping. So I remember I was at church and I would stay after church a lot to help out with um, the different ministries. And so I was a part of um, I was active on one of the communication teams at my church that we did behind the scenes ministry for people online. Y'all know how I am about my Facebook lives. Right. So my church would go live on Facebook and I would be the one there giving the links for where to go get prayer and, you know, how to find what the pastor was referring to. So it was really cool. And somebody shared some pizza with me that they had brought in. I thought that was so cool because they let me take the whole pizza home. They were tired of it. Um, It was a a brand new box of pizza, but I guess they had it in another ministry and they brought it to us. So I took the pizza home. I ate it. I enjoyed it because it was a cheese pizza from Papa John's. And I had decided already that I was just going to stick with, you know, vegetarian diet, no meat, because I couldn't process foods right. Or I couldn't process the fats, the grease, the oils in meat. So I was happy to take a cheese pizza home. I didn't have to cook. I didn't have to go buy anything. But y'all, that night, <laughs> me in my upstairs bathroom, I was a homeowner at the time. And I did. I lived in my basement. I had my basement um, finished, but my bathroom was upstairs. So I could not make it up those stairs fast enough because me and Papa John's went to war that night, y'all. So I remember calling a friend that had to drive to me, drive me to the hospital and drop me off. That's how excruciatingly uncomfortable my stomach was at the time. And so after a series of emergency room visits, one night I got there and God just sent this doctor who I feel like just saw my battle (laughs) over these last few weeks of trying to eat food. I mean, I was a meat eater. I, I, I look like a meat eater. I know how meat tastes. I was raised on meat. I love the vegan vegetarian journey as well. But like I said, I was bored with it after a while. I tried it again um, as a result of the gallstones. And then because I saw what it was doing to my body and the discomfort, like I'm sitting here near tears now because It was a struggle to just eat regular foods or what I thought was regular, like a piece of cheese pizza. I'm like, how harmless is pizza? But that pizza, (laughs) y'all, was it before this angel of a doctor came in and he gave my stomach one press and I just looked at him like, have you lost your mind touching where you know it hurts? He said, okay, that's it. We're admitting you to surgery. And I was like, Thank you, Jesus. Now, honestly, y'all, here's another side note. I did not want surgery. Let me tell you why. And it's so vain, but it's so funny. And I had a very good reasoning behind it. I lost so much weight (laughs) with gallstones. I do not recommend gallstones. I really enjoyed all the weight that I had shed as a result of letting meat go. I enjoyed the fact that I couldn't eat everything I wanted because it would come up. So I just wouldn't touch it because I didn't like how it made me feel. So I had to really, really restrict my diet in addition to the foods that the doctor gave me a list of that was safer to eat. And I was like, I just won't eat meat and I just won't eat that. And I denied myself all of these meals and I lost so much weight. And I was so scared of getting the surgery because I knew it would correct the problem. And I was going to gain the weight back because I didn't have a plan in place for how to keep this food, this weight off. I mean, I couldn't go around just only eating soup or eating popsicles, which is what they gave me at the hospital after surgery. Jello and broth and stuff like that. Coffee and tea is cute, (laughs) but I knew I was going to get hungry, hungry. After this surgery, my appetite would come back because I had lost my appetite. I really didn't want anything to eat. This went on for almost a year, you guys. And over the span of the year, I had lost so much weight. And just the vainest reason I did not. I was like, God, just let the let the gallstones just dissolve away and disappear. And I was trying stuff like um, apple cider vinegar and just every little homeopathic natural remedy that I could think of. And my body was like... We're playing. <laughs> we need surgery. So by the grace of God and some angel nurses and uh, just a, a really understanding doctor, they um, admitted me at about seven o'clock one night that I went in for the last time after the cheese pizza. And it was only a 45 minute procedure. And they kept me overnight. Um, all I remember is some really, really good sleep. 
Like they kept talking to me, asking me questions. And I'm like, why would you get me back here right outside of the emergency room, like the um, operating room curtains to quiz me on who I am and my name and birthday and blah, blah. I just want to go to sleep and I don't want to feel no pain as I sleep. And I definitely don't want to feel no pain when I wake up. But I was a very good patient because I was tired. And so the surgery process was also my resting process. And I say that because over time, as I was admitted to the emergency room, I remember one time I had, I was doing okay one day. I had pre-recorded a podcast interview with a lady and the day that the podcast was released for this mega summit, I was actually speaking on a panel with one of my life coaches. We pre-planned everything, but the day it came out that my session aired for the summit, I was literally laying in the emergency room on my side, trying to listen to the replay of this podcast. And the nurses were looking at me like, what is wrong with you? (laughs) So it was a lesson in learning how to relax. They gave me this cocktail, y'all, of medicines that whatever was in it, my whole body just said, yes, Lord, and surrendered. (laughs) I had no choice. I couldn't move. All I could do was literally rest in the Lord and let the professionals do what they needed to do. And so one of my friends, I just told her, you know, I'm in the emergency room. They're going to do surgery. That's all I said. I look up and guess who's sitting in my (laughs) my hospital room trying to get everything that I get as far as like the goodies that I got to go home with that night. Like if I get a lotion, she wants a lotion. If I get body wash, I want to buy. I'm like, who is paying this bill that you getting everything I get? I'm like, do you realize I'm in emergency room? I didn't even tell you to come here. What are you doing? So she came and sat. Um, the, the procedure was 45 minutes. And all I remember after the surgery was rolling back into the hospital room, seeing her sitting there. Cause I knew she was there before I went in. She's in there sleeping, getting her some good rest. And all I remember saying was what happened? That's all I could say. What happened? Like I was so concerned. I don't know what happened in that span of a 45 minute surgery, me being checked in and sterilized and all that good stuff. I just remember before the surgery, I took a really good shower because my hospital room had a shower in it. And um, the nurse, um, like they sanitized me down and I had a hairnet, even though I don't have hair, which I thought was funny. Um, And I'm like, I should probably, I could go live. I could share this experience. (laughs) But like my body was like, quit playing. So I did not share that. But I shared when I was checked in, I shared um, when I was checking out. My friend was there to, because your mouth is open so long during the surgery, my lips were really chapped and dry. So she was there to apply Vaseline as a good friend does. And I just kept asking her what happened. And I I remember she kept repeating whatever she was saying, but I still didn't know what happened. (laughs) So all these videos we see on TikTok and stuff like that of people being on anesthetics. Yeah, that that's really true. We just wake up saying the weirdest stuff. And all I remember saying is, what happened? <laughs> so they kept me overnight. They would check on me throughout the night. The nurses were really good. The hospital was really clean. Well care just gave some really good um, customer care. And so overnight, they would wake me up to go walk the hall to make sure I walked good, make sure I was healing good. They checked my pee, which I thought was fascinating because I'm intrigued by the body. Um, so I got to collect my pee in a little cup on the toilet, which is disgusting to some people, but fascinating to me. And then the next day, I was so ready to get out of there. I thought I wanted to be there to rest, but no, I can go home and do this. And so my friends uh, came and picked me up, took me home. And then later on, uh, one of my friends drove my car back because the very last trip to the hospital, I drove myself. But they were like, you are not allowed to drive yourself home. And I have a stick shift, so I need both feet, both hands and my full mind. But if I'm on meds and fresh out of surgery, they're like, you will not drive this little Honda home. (laughs) So I came home. I rested. Friends checked on me. Um, Friends that are nurses, which I thought was the sweetest thing. Miss Brenda, um, I went to church with her and her family. She's a nurse, been one for as long as I've been alive. She brought me a full care package of broth and all these different soups and a little fluffy lamb stuffed animal just saying get well soon. And um, another woman from my church brought me um, fruits to eat and they were really supportive. But lo and behold, (laughs) over time, all the weight I had lost came creeping right on back in because that appetite came creeping right on back in. Now, one thing I did do was continue my vegetarian diet. And in the next few months, it'll be right at six years that I've been fully vegan vegetarian. Um, 
and I still love it. And so this time around was different for me um, versus the time I did it as a result of my fast. And because the fast, you can, you know, go back and forth. But this time I was like, wait a minute, my body's not processing meat with gallstones. The meat, the grease, the oils, the fats, everything that came from eating meat and bad foods is what gave me gallstones. Now I don't have a gallbladder, which really is going to mess with me because the doctors explain how now without a gallbladder, I would basically everything comes right out. Like your body takes what it needs and it just disposes the rest right away. And so over time, even at church, I started to um, meet people who had had gallstone surgery as well. And so they confirmed, you know, yeah, we eat. It comes right out. And I was like, well, maybe that's how I'll stay skinny. You know, just no realistic plan of keeping this weight off. I, that was my only concern, not being uncomfortable with the pain and not gaining the weight back. And so um, I stay vegetarian. I still eat everything else. So when people say, well, do you eat this and do you eat that? I eat everything except meat. OK, and I'm enjoying it this time around. So I prayed about it and I'm like, God, I want to be a healthy vegetarian. So, again, looking at me, you would never know I'm vegetarian because I'm thick. I'm fine. I'm beautiful. I love my body. Love the skin I'm in. Yes, I would love to have kept all the weight off, but I know it takes more work and more of a plan and you can't just wish it away. <laughs> and my health came first and I am extremely healthy. They tested my gallbladder for cancer. It came back negative um, and all the results were amazing. My twenty thousand dollar hospital bill was forgiven. So that's how I know it was God. And I'm thankful for the journey who that sent the people who supported me and still to this day. So because my mind is now open to the possibilities of veganism, vegetarianism, all the wonderful places we have here in Atlanta of as far as where to go and what to eat. It's endless. So when y'all see me share my food on social media, it's not just a vanity thing. It's like, look at what I get to eat as a smart vegetarian. I eat good. <laughs> and that was a dream of mine since childhood. I always wanted to eat really good. Never knew that I could do so in a healthy way and still be who I am. And so that's a part of my journey. Um, and I have been invited to speak about my journey to veganism, vegetarianism, and the, the differences vegans believe you know, in um, not eating anything that comes from an animal. But like I said, I eat everything <laughs> except meat, including things that comes from an animal like eggs and cheese and milk and all that. So I'm not picky. I'm not a vegan, protect the planet, don't kill animals type vegan. I'm just vegan because my body doesn't process food right, okay? So if I had a choice of vegan, vegetarian, I would eat both. And I do. So that's why I share my food. And a lot of you guys are in my inbox like, oh, my gosh, that looks so good. Where do you get that? What is that? Blah, blah, blah. And so that's kind of a little bit about my journey. Um, and I'm thankful because, as I mentioned, I've been asked on panels to talk about this because you don't meet a lot of black vegetarians or vegans. You definitely don't meet a lot of what I call the voluptuous vegetarians who still eat everything except meat. And so my journey to vegan vegetarianism is a lot of fun. I enjoy it and I have no complaints. So while I didn't plan on showing up <laughs> to share this story tonight, hopefully Coach Marquita Young, you got what you requested. Shouts out to all my coaches who are here. Y'all, I have been caught so up in my story. Um, hopefully I said something that made you laugh <laughs> or bless you. Maybe you too have had gallstone surgery it was not a fun journey, but I'm glad to be here and extremely healthy. Yes, the food comes out right away, but yes, I eat really, really good. So um, I'm not an expert on being vegan or vegetarian or giving up meat or food alternatives. I'm still learning, and that's why I share my journey here on Facebook with you guys. It now is a part of my self-care process as a life coach because self-care is big for us in the life care uh, life coaching community. And so the last time I visited my doctor and she ordered like a complete, full everything with my blood work, she said, you know, you're very healthy, your numbers look very good, and you're doing great. So that's my vegan vegetarian story not any type of deep nothing behind it other than my health 
you know, and making sure that um, my gall gallbladder wasn't infected or cancerous or anything like that. So thank y'all for listening. I appreciate you guys. Um, if you're still here, let me see some emojis real quick. If you have questions for me, you can throw them in the comments real quick. Um, but that's my story. And I think it is going to be phenomenal to look up and see 10 years later, 15 years later, you know, me still going on this vegan journey. Um, because even when I ate meat, I really only ate like fish and chicken. But when that fish let me down the first time, I was like, you know what? There is no hope. If shrimp is giving you mercury poisoning, salmon is making me vomit <laughs> and chicken is tasting rubbery. And that's all I eat. I'm not really missing out on a whole lot. So I know some people, though, are big meat eaters. Y'all love y'all's meat, whatever. I'm not judging. And I sure enough don't accept judgment from anybody. Even though uh, some people will look at my food on my plate and be like, where your meat at? Where your chicken at? Everything I eat is delicious. And I've even convinced several of my friends to go to my ve uh, very favorite vegetarian restaurant here in Atlanta called Cafe Sunflower. And they have sat there with me across the table and be and like, I cannot believe there's no meat on my plate and this food is so good. Like one friend even argued with a waitress like, swear this ain't chicken. <laughs> and it was like a soy based um, meat product that they had made to taste like chicken. But I don't miss the taste of meat at all. I don't miss, I know how chicken and bacon and steak and fish and shrimp and beef and pork, I know how all that tastes. I was raised on it. It's just the last few years that I've been vegan vegetarian and so I am now entered into a whole new world or portal full of the endless possibilities of how that squash and zucchini and onions and mushrooms and green bell pepper red bell pepper can be cooked <laughs> and it's all about the flavoring and the seasonings and if you find a really good restaurant in my case because again I still don't cook outside of the air fryer or maybe the little toaster oven that I have here but I find some really good foods at really nice restaurants, and that's been a dream of mine. Didn't know this is how it would come true, but I'm very, very thankful for it. So I'm going to wrap this up and jump off. Thank you to everybody who popped on and off. Thank you for your participation, listening to my story about the vegan life coach. Maybe that's what I will title it. Until we meet again, my friends, remember there's someone somewhere. They are waiting on you to walk in your destiny so they can walk into theirs, even if it's as a vegan and vegetarian. I'm not judging you or telling you to come to the other side, but it is fun. Okay, kale tastes different when it's seasoned right. Okay, I will see you guys very, very soon. Um, make sure your notifications are turned on to me back here where I share more personal things about life coach, <laughs> certification trainer, Dr. AJ Austin. I'll see y'all soon. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. God bless. Bye, y'all.